Hello and welcome back to something that is actually quite exciting for me. Uh, yes, it is just another review, but in fact, there's something a little special about this one. This is the 100th review that is currently public on the channel. Going back to all the old dino reviews, all the way back to the Carnegie 2011 uh, Carnotaurus that started off that whole series all the way till now. We are about to hit 100 with this very video. And I didn't just want to review anything for Review 100, I wanted to make it a little special. Uh, I should also give a huge shout out to Dino Man, Eric, because he actually figured out that this was going to be my 100th review. There's no way that I would have just known that, like, off the top of my head. I don't keep track of this stuff, but he made a bunch of, like, like pie charts and things about my reviews. It was crazy, and, of course, I looked at them over Discord with him, and uh, he was like, hey, you know, your 100th review is actually coming up pretty soon. This was, like, maybe seven reviews ago or something when he did this, and uh, I was like, we might have to do something pretty special. So we're doing something pretty special. Gosh darn it. We're looking at my favorite figure in my collection. Now, of course, what my favorite figure is kind of changes, but I perceive, uh, I foresee, rather, not perceive, I foresee this figure remaining my favorite for a while, and that is the Eofauna Atlasaurus. Look at this beauty. This thing is just incredible. Uh, I know some people are still not a huge fan of it. It's definitely debatable what is objectively the best Eofauna figure out of the five that are currently out at the time of me recording this. Uh, for me though, regardless of which can be sort of seen as like objectively the best, which is really hard to determine, this is just personally the one that I prefer. Uh, I definitely prefer it to the Giganotosaurus and even to the Paleoloxodon, which says a lot because I really love, well, I, I really love both those figures. So anyhow, let's get into the Atlas source. Let's talk about why I like it so much. Uh, first off, the overall design is just really appealing to me and really impressive. There's a good feeling of weight and movement with the figure. The pose is a simple walking pose, but it looks like the animal is moving at a decently high speed for just walking. It looks like a lot of power is being put into the animal's movement. And there's just a really nice, subtle, lifelike quality, a nice sort of majesty to the way it just is presented as a piece. It doesn't really have a bad angle, to be honest. Uh, this is actually roughly the angle it's displayed on the shelf, if you're looking at my shelves, you know, straight on. And uh, just turning it all the way around, you can see this is kind of a nice angle with its head swooping over to the side. Oh, I love the subtle head turn. It does a lot for the pose and the overall sort of just appearance of the model. Uh, like pretty much all of Eofauna's figures thus far, the accuracy gets a huge thumbs up. Uh, I didn't really know much about Atlasaurus uh, before getting this model, so I had to do quite a bit of research, and my research yielded uh, largely 100% positive results. I really can't come up with anything to complain about. A lot of people just assumed that this that this figure had like serious anatomical problems when the pictures for it were first released from Eofauna because it does look really weird. The overall bodily proportions and the posture look really strange, uh, but it turns out that's just how Atlasaurus do, and uh, this figure perfectly captures how Atlasaurus do. So, uh, yeah, there is a big improvement on this model in terms of Eofauna's ability to produce quality stuff, in my opinion. A big improvement from the Giganotosaurus. Now, I'll grab it here since it's just off to my right. Um, a big complaint people had for this figure, the Giganotosaurus, is just how smooth it is. Now, didn't really bother me if they were going to continue with minimal detail and a smooth, simple sort of integument style. I was prepared to just deal with that. I didn't really have much of a, you know, preferential bias like for it, but I didn't really have a preferential bias against it either. I just thought it was kind of nice. But this figure knocks it out of the park. This figure has far superior detailing work and far better rendered integument and scalation in my opinion. As you can see, the scales on this figure are far more visible and crisp. It has pretty much individual tiny scales visible across the entire body. The head is the only place where it smooths out even a little bit, and even there you can see plenty of visible scales. It is really legitimately impressive. It's genuinely, like, just really well done. And, uh... Oh my gosh, even among like the more wrinkly, kind of uneven areas of skin, you can see that pretty much not a scale is missed, is there's even scales on the bottom of the feet. 
You, you freaking go get him. Go get him, Yovana. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, this figure, the detail, not only is it better than the Gignotosaurus, not only is it more up to current standards, but it even exceeds a lot of other companies, in my opinion, right now. Like, this is really, like I said, legitimately impressive detailing work. And not only is the scalation great, but there's also a lot of bigger details, like some of the bulging musculature up here around this shoulder, or this more, like, loose folding skin down by the the corner of the gut. There's lots of good stuff like that with musculature and the larger bits of sort of wrinkled or folding, stretching skin, what have you, that, that look really, really good. Yeah, look at this big fold of skin here stretching as the leg swings back and everything. Looks fantastic. Really well done. Really consistently well done across the whole piece. The coloration on this model is also really nice. Some of the patterns are not, like, the best thing if you focus too much on them. Like, here we have, like, kind of a straight-up, like, tortoise shell sort of pattern going and then some tiger stripes down here some more horizontal stripes along the thigh but you know they're all really subtle this is probably the most visible striping on the whole body is on this side of the torso and even that doesn't stick out too much and the way all those sort of striping patterns work together when you just don't focus on them and just take in the whole figure i think is aesthetically really just pleasing and nice and as well, the, the subtle, like, blending of all the different greens and stuff. We have this darker moss green across the top, the more desaturated dark green down by the feet. In fact, it's kind of just a gray or a brown. And then the lighter tan sort of coming into different areas. And really nice subtle blending and fading to a lot of the different colors of paint. And uh, it looks really naturalistic, really adds to the lifelike quality of the figure. And of course, up by the head, we have some actual nice brighter colors. We have this really smooth fade into blue it's like it's actually you can kind of see where it happens like it's not the the most like lengthened fade like it's pretty short where it turns from green to blue but it's just blended together so nicely that it, it just works it looks really believable and then we have sort of the opposite going on with the yellow where there's no fading at all it's just a really bold sort of yellow ring right behind the skull but i love that as well and even that tiny little head i think is so nicely designed I just like the facial expression this dude has going on. He just looks likable and charming, and the eyes are really, really well done. Uh, the eyes on this figure are not super consistent for everyone. Some people have this figure and say that the eyes are really derpy on theirs, looking in weird directions, but on mine, it's fine, so... Yay! Um, there's also a subtle fade into yellow on the, the sort of nasal ridge area, as you can see, little nostrils and everything, and even some scales, despite how small the head is. So that's, that's about it. Oh, I could keep talking about this figure endlessly in terms of just the vague sort of feeling it gives me. A big part of why I like this figure so much is not anything super specific. It's just the overall design and the overall feeling that I think it conveys as a piece of paleo art. It just has a really nice, subtle, lifelike, yet impressive kind of quality and design to it. And I just think it's absolutely wonderful. The only real, there is one little functional issue I should mention. The tip of the tail does touch the ground. And for some people, it's not just me. There's a few people where it does that. Some people it's fine and it's above the ground, but just something to keep in mind. Really hard to be bothered by it though when the figure is so well done otherwise. So I'm going to be giving this one a 10 out of 10 because like, duh. And here it is with my other Eofauna figures. And here is the card. You can see they no longer write out the stats, like what they are, or have abbreviations or anything. It's just symbols now. So that's interesting. Um, and there you go. I will see you on the flip. And uh, thank you so much for watching my 100th review. If you've been here since the first one, that means the world. And I hope to see you on the next. Bionicle Story signing out! Ah, we haven't used that intro in years! Intro, outro. Oh, wow. My brain is broken. <laughs>